Now, hi, Paolo and Gabriele. Um, yeah, um, no. you want to tell us a bit more about Riverboom? Uh, yes. Uh, well, first of all, hello, everybody. I am in Ivory Coast right now, and Gabriele is in Italy. And uh, I feel um, a little uh, embarrassed uh, coming to Riverboom after all these very serious presentations you've had to now uh, focus agency maps and all that. Um, Riverboom is something a lot less serious and thinking of the presentation we're going to show you now I feel a little bit uh, strange. Uh, I'll just uh, share the screen and Gabriel and I will tell you a little bit of the origins of Riverboom and what we've done and uh, and then why we are um, uh, not an agency any traditional way we're more a group of friends working together. Um, uh, how do I do I do the desktop share um uh, i think at state it should work let me see uh, uh do you know how i do the do you, do you see my desktop now no i don't hear you anymore um so share screen and i do to share open system preferences to grant access. Uh, where do I, can you help me on that? Where I have to go in and grant access? Um, or, or maybe Gabri, you can share your screen. Let me try. What's that? Talk a bit why we doing this. Yeah. Working with uh, who are on this panel today, and um, like many of us, we, we realized that the market is changing, that the classic um, photo agency is, is uh, there are only a few around, and so, and uh, these new collectives. Um, started and, and and there is so much more than the old photo agency. I think uh, we have to talk about the creative process as well and the dynamics of creativity. And for me as a client, it's extremely important. Um, and I really appreciate working with them in order to develop projects together. It's more kind of creative ping pong. And I think all the three agencies' focus is still remodeling and uh, shaping the new agency, but. Uh, River Boom as a very small collective, and uh, the guys will explain later how they started out. And maps are really like role models for our participants, for the young photographers out in the world. So, because mm -hmm. sometimes I know and I'm, I'm, I heard it a lot, so they feel right, like really lonely being out there as a photographer. So, and this is to encourage um, young folks to join forces, to establish creative platforms, and to work together and which is extremely important for the creative process, but as well from an economical point of view. So, and I think uh, uh, MAPS and uh, River Boom there, um, Paolo just said, it's, you know, it's a lot about fun and less mm -hmm. serious, but it's, you know, it works well as a collective as far as I know, and I'm, I'm keen to learn a bit more, you know, they had big exhibitions and all, they have good projects, they're collaborating with Archer and the likes, and uh, with clients like Geo or National Geographic, and so I think that's something, and our audience can learn a lot from from them. Okay, so if if thank you, Lars. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see the images right now. Gabriel has shared the screen, but I, um, I was just going to tell you a little bit about the origins. Do you, do you can you confirm you see the images? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, so this all starts in Afghanistan uh, almost 20 years ago. And this is Serge Michel, who is a journalist. And I was a photographer with him, as you see in this image. And we were supposed to, you know, work very seriously. Um, the next images, 
um, it, it is the kind of work I was doing. So serious black and white photojournalism um, uh, for magazines long term. And Serge at a certain point says, you know, this guy is, is going to come and join us. And this is Claude Bestold, and he's Swiss as well, as, as much as Serge is. And he's uh, not a photojournalist. He's somebody which is uh, ridiculous in many ways and was constantly scared and terrorized. And this is the kind of images he was doing. He was telling me, um, Paolo, I'm doing this very interesting project is called too late pictures. I wanted to photograph this donkey and I photographed it too late. And I was just flabbergasted. I thought, you know, this is makes no sense at all. What kind of image, uh, what kind of project is that? But uh, Serge had embarked us in a tour, an entire tour of Afghanistan uh, 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 across the Northern Road, as you see in this image. And I was blocked with this guy who I completely despised and thought he was completely ridiculous. And he was doing images very frontal, very simple like this. These are pecans in uh, Iran. But he was not doing one, he was doing dozens of these images. So it's a bit like a Bella Gila Becher uh, on, on drugs. Uh, it, the idea was reproduce the image as many times and you show that these uh, uh, cars, which are a bit the symbol at the time of Iran, are existing. And, and you know, we had these endless discussions with, uh, with uh, Claude about photography. And he was like, you're stupid. Look at the colors of this country. And uh, next, uh, you know, this, is, this country is just full of cars. Why are you photographing in black and white? So we'd have these long discussions and eventually we remained blocked in the northern country uh, next to a river called uh, Boom. And it, where in this place, we were forced to stay a night in the danger of being attacked by Taliban. And, you know, we thought we were going to basically uh, die that night. Uh, it is, the, the road had completely collapsed. The people in the cars next to us were basically bandits and, you know, were trying to convince our driver to kill us and take our goods. And, and so we said, you know, if, uh, if the guy in the car next door, next image, which was this guy, and his uncle, which is the next image, are gonna, this is Fatullah Khan, one of the, the most, you know, scary warlords and war criminal in the north of Afghanistan. If these guys make us survive, what shall we do? And we said, you know, we're gonna make an agency. Actually, we wanna gonna make a publishing house. We wanna make our own books. So we make our own projects, we're completely free, and we make our own books. So the first book we did was a guide to Afghanistan. At the time, a lot of people were going to Afghanistan, mainly American soldiers, and didn't have many ideas of what the country was like. So we said, we're going to make a guide, like a Lonely Planet kind of guide, but only in images. And so what's the best beard in Afghanistan? And every time you, you have, you know, you have this concept of what is the best. So you have a selection on your left and you have your best on your right. But if you want to go to the restaurant, for example, what's the best restaurant in Afghanistan? And we have all the maps there and you can see exactly uh, what you've served and what's the best taxi in Afghanistan. So obviously this is like a, an ironic way of showing what's the best Humvee in the country, how you approach a, a, a visually a place which has been lots of cliches made about this place. Um, Claude then went on and did, went a grant and did the same idea of doing a guidebook to another place where very few people go, which is the North Pole. And again, he was not going to make the beautiful classic images, but was going to make it in a different way. So what's the best iceberg or what's the best uh, igloo or what's the best uh, food? The food in North Pole is not particularly good. These are birds which are stuffed in a carcass of a, of a seal for six months before they eat in one of the most disgusting things you can ever eat probably. What's the best uniform? And so then at that stage, other two members joined uh, River Boom, so uh, Serge, Claude, myself, and Gabriele Galimberti and Eduardo de Lille. Yeah, and I think you cannot see my face now because I'm sharing my screen, but, but um, I, you can hear my voice probably. So yes, I joined River Boom in 2007. They called me because they need some help for uh, a project they were doing in China. So that was the year before the Olympic Games in Beijing. And so we decided to make a guide in Beijing and I was there for a few months photographing everything around the city. And so basically the concept is always the same. We have 10 photos, one is the best and nine are the others. And, and we, we show on the map where we photograph the things. So these are the snack you can have in Beijing and the way you move around the city with electrics 
uh, bikes, or if you want to hear some good music uh, in Beijing, you can find a lot of heavy metal concerts. I don't know why, but in 2007, they were so crazy for heavy metal music. And so I was there for a few months and I did that. And then a couple of years after, we decided to do another guide, more or less this, exactly the same concept, but instead of doing that on a, in a country or in a city, we decided to do it at the Louvre Museum because actually the Louvre Museum has a lot more visitors than you know, a country like Egypt. And so we decided to, oh, it's not moving. Why, wait, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so when you go at the, muse at the museum like uh, the Louvre, you need transportation to move around. So what's the best transportation you can find there? And that's the way we discover how to move around. And you wanna have a picnic, you can find many picnic spots. You wanna have a party, there are many parties at the Louvre Museums. N nothing beats a Bruegel as a fire party. Yeah, yeah. or you are a nudist, you can go there and find your nudist colony. The best uh, breast of the museum, Ms. Ms. Louvre and Mr. Louvre. And so basically the concept is always the same, but in different places. And the, the year after we decided to do it in Switzerland because three of the members are from there. And we said, okay, let's do something in our country. But we didn't wanna do exactly the same thing. So we decided to make something new and we started to make comparison of photos. So we said, let's do Switzerland versus the world. And so in Switzerland, you have this kind of beard and in Afghanistan, you have uh, something similar. So we started to make this matches. And that's how our Syria uh, Syria um, versus is was born. The idea is always taking somehow the cliches of a country and playing around them. And so uh, that's somehow and showing it in numbers. So if you have the, 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 the fighters of the traditional Swiss um, uh, sports, you compare them to the, the Iranian fighters. Or here we are, for example, the kebabs against the, the Texan um, fires. And every time it's somehow uh, playing with visual cliches. Israel Vice President Eduardo de Lille, who's one of the other members of Riverboom, did years ago, playing on, on the visual cliches of Israel and Palestine. Okay, so I, th I think you can go. You can go ahead, Paolo. I got just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you go ahead on on these. It's 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 always somehow uh, giving the, the the examples uh, with uh, a, a lot of numbers and and playing on that somehow. Uh, we did the same for Florence, a city where uh, three of us were based at a certain moment. So the city of Florence asked us to you know, redesign a bit Florence uh, individually. So we did again the comparison. So it's the Bisteca, the classic Bisteca, and then against the Pundu in Switzerland. So it's always this versus sign, the churches against the icebergs, the, 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 the waste paper baskets uh, in Florence against the ones in Switzerland. Who are the invaders in Florence? You know, we have, we worked in war areas. Invaders in Florence are obviously tourists, as you see in this next one comparison of the buses in Florence against the Humvees in, in, um, in Afghanistan. The, uh, the symbols, uh, the, the cliches of Florence, David against the Mao in China, and tattoos, you know, everybody wants a tattoo now from where they was from, so we did the tattoos in Florence, the symbol of Florence and the ones of Texas. So every time it's, it's a visual combat, and this was an exhibition which was done in the streets of Florence. We had 600 of those posters, up the street, the city offered us, you know, museum spaces, but we preferred to have something like that. So you had this very strong impact images. So these places, which are usually used for advertising, were used for photography. And then, you know, Gabriele did this book about the grandmother's uh, cooking, which was a very big success. And we realized that one of the few books that still have success are cooking books. So as Riverboom, and again, I uh, have to stress here, it's not a very more serious things. Um, we decided who could be a successful person, everybody from footballers to stars, make cookbooks. And obviously it's Kim Jong-un from North Korea. So we had this mask 
of Kim, and we decided to make a recipe book exactly like we make it for all the famous people, and go on of Kim and the kind of uh, very irreverent recipes he might have been cooking. Go on, uh, and this is when he cooks opposition uh, uh, people, and the, the martini is made with tears. And uh, the next project, I'm going to advance past, Riverboom, as I was mentioning, is not a very serious uh, um, endeavor, but we have annual meetings uh, like all the other agencies, like for example, Magnum, they get somewhere under annual meeting. We did it in one of these cheap resorts on the Red, uh, Red Sea. And this is what the place looks like. And we, we decided we had to make a project that was from starting to end, from the year till the very uh, public, the book, the PDF of the book in one day. And so we did this project photographing all the people in this place from uh, putting them in the order of the color from the skin. So from the lightest, you can go on Gabriele, to the reddest. These are people mainly from Eastern Europe, uh, Eastern Germany, or what was Eastern Germany, that come there because it's a very cheap resort. And we cataloged that them all by the color of the skin. And there are 50 of them. So obviously the book was called 50 Shades of Red. So we all got together there and one day we did this, this, this concept book, which was cataloging everybody in front of the sun and skin. The next project, and I'm getting more and more embarrassed as we're going on, is called uh, Assel Adams. So uh, Gabriele, you know, started photography as many people as a young uh, teenager was fascinated with Ansel Adams and his mythical side of uh, photography, the uh, great outdoors. And um, when he was doing a trip to US, uh, he started reproducing those pictures, but with few details inserted, which is always showing off his ass. And that year was, you know, taking a very uh, disrespectful look uh, to one of the masters of photography. And these little games uh, that we started, at times you see them, it's a bit where is Wally kind of, or where is Wally's ass actually, uh, kind of imagery. And uh, we go through the mid, this very beautiful uh, hand-bound book with all these images. Gabriele, do you want to say something of this work of yours? <laughs> uh, no, the only thing that I want to say about these, it's, it's quite ironic because I remember we sent the book to the book contest in Arles in 2015 and it, obviously we sent a book as a joke uh, but we received an email like a week before the festival and the email said you are selected by like one of the best top 10 book of the year Short and list, said, yeah. this is obviously a joke I mean we took joke of them and they're taking joke of us but actually when we went we went to Arles we we found the book there together with the 10 best book of the year. So I think somebody got our, our irony and want to make us happy. <laughs> and another time we went to this same resort in the Red Sea where we all get together and try, you know, because that year is Riverboom is really the place where we think about photography, we think about life, but each one of us has his own career. We do our work uh, more serious than what is Riverboom. And uh, when we were here, we met, can you just go back one slide? Uh, we met this guy whose name is Islam, and he does up the rooms in this resort. And each evening we would come back to our room, we found something like the next image. He would make these amazing towel sculptures. And he would use the elements of the room that he would find around and sculpt the towels in these magnificent things. And actually, we started imagining that these were really amazing uh, contemporary sculptures. They could have been, you know, something Catalan did or something uh, any other pop artist might have imagined. So we started photographing them as um, real sculptures and we made a book which is called The Art of Islam. These are all actual sculptures he made. He didn't make them for us. He actually goes around, he uses, you know, toilet paper, the things. And we made a book which is covered, which is made with, the cover is a towel, a real physical towel uh, from uh, the, the, this resort in the every tower. And here is still. Is this what I'm making in here? 
komm mal zu. Ja, was wie sieht das Spiel gerade aus? In welchem Zeitfenster bist du? Ich habe ein Vorher. Ach so, das sind die letzten zehn Minuten. Hannah, willst du dazu kommen? Nee, Moment. Nee. Oh. Somebody's microphone, I think, is on. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so in, at the end, we're going to show you something a little bit more serious, which is, again, a collaborative project because Riverboom is where we play around with ideas. We play around, you know, the cliches of photography. We, we give space to projects that have no commercial value. Uh, and it's really an, like a gym for ideas, but then we do uh, more serious projects. And one of them uh, is a, again, a collaborative project between Gabriele and myself, which is called Tax Havens. Uh, at the time was living in Haiti and Gabriele came and visited and just you know, one hour from Haiti, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. There's one of the richest countries in the world, just the Cayman Islands, which obviously is a tax haven. And we decided we want to investigate how a tax haven works because we, we realized that we didn't really know. Is it just the kind of place you can go and put your money? And how does it work economically? Is it illegal or legal? So for the next two years, Gabri and I went on, you know, uh, 12, if I'm not 15. mistaken, 13. how many? 15, 13. 13 tax havens around the world from Asia to uh, the Caribbean, from Europe, we went to, to Africa and tried to tell the story of how these places work and what they mean for economy. These are not uh, like places which is like a side note in the, in the world way economy works. These are really central in the way um, uh, our finance works. Uh, Amazon, Apple would not exist without the schemes devised by tax havens. And, and so we did a very classical photographic approach, four by five photography, and, um, and tried to show this. The deal with a project like this is to work on lots of different levels. It's a book, uh, which was published by Dewey Lewis and um, Del Pier. Uh, it's uh, um, an exhibition which started in Arles. Uh, it's, uh, and has moved to 20 different locations. It's a magazine piece, which has been published you know, more than 30 times around the world. And the, the, the idea was really to have a project that could exist on different levels. We worked with different organizations which were investigating tax havens, like uh, in these photos, these are people which were in the Panama Papers. And we also uh, wanted to offer uh, visually something of something you never see. Here we are in Angola, one of the places which most suffers from the drain of money from tax havens. And uh, the final image is the next one, which uh, we photographed in um, Singapore. This is, an, uh, just go back to that image, please. Uh, this is uh, a swimming pool at the top of the Marina Bay Sands overlooking the financial district. This is a guy working in the financial district, you know, showing somehow the lack of gravity on people that um, take advantage of tax havens. So that's, uh, I think, the last image for us here. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we went back. Uh, idea of, uh, you know, you, you started up with something you wanted to do, uh, projects you really had fun doing, and you, that the, the collective enabled you to turn it into a really successful undertake, undertaking enterprise, really. Yes, yes. It, um, I think I missed the starting of your question, but uh, yes, I, I think it's, I think Lars was saying before that to be a photographer is a lonely job. And I think that's very true. Uh, for us, I, my dream was to be part of a rock and roll band. And uh, with Riverboom, we tried to refine a bit that kind of atmosphere where we um, working together uh, and the, the fact we could exchange ideas, exchange our knowledge and, and you know, um, really feel free in not having the whole element of, of competition between photographers, but collaborating. That's been extremely a blessing for us. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. Is that if you, um, I mean, if you look at um, River Boom, is this something you 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 borrow ideas from? You might um, get take inspiration from or me personally? Yeah. Well, uh, for focus <laughs> possibly. Um, uh, I think uh, this is a uh, very uh, a different ways of approach to 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 the to the topics and uh, River Boone has their humor and their yeah t technical approach uh, which is very obviously in s uh, working in series of uh, pictures and uh, for focus we don't have any member who's working as uh, the guys do but uh, it's uh, interesting to see and to, to discuss the 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 intention of photography and uh, it's funny that Al selected your book as uh, one of the ten top ten uh, books of the year and so so mm -hmm. in this ways it's uh, interesting how f uh, how you can use photography or, or unusual photography to 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 push a discussion what what is it uh, what is it uh, transporting in ways of visual content and how mm. would you like to last yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, that was a very interesting um, presentation. I think uh, there will be lots of questions from our chat later. But I think now we we have to explain. It. We had some technical issues here, and we lost Hannah and uh, Leticia, unfortunately. And so even uh, if their presentation was not ended yet. So, but uh, you are again with us. Can you hear us now? Again? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. We are here. Uh, Hannah is uh, is still here. Uh, I from the last messages I got. Um, yes, here she is. Yeah, we, we have to apologize. It's the first time we're doing this over uh, different time zones here, being in present and having you on screen. And we lost you when I asked you if your uh, presentation was ended. So, but um, um, maybe there are some questions and uh, something you want to add to this discussion because I'm, since I pointed out at the beginning, I'm, I'm particularly interested in how you work and how that creative process works within this group and um, which is not only a group of photographers but a, a group of creatives as well and I think I'm pretty sure almost the only uh, collective or creative lab uh, which is uh, found, uh, funded uh, founded by uh, photographers and art directors and editors. Yeah I actually it's, uh, it's very much of a collaborative work um, Usually it's really organic, like um, uh, opportunities come either from photographers or from creatives. And, and I have to, yeah, to insist on the fact that the, the way it works is really, it has happened several times, like uh, a member usually, well, most of the time I have to say photographers, uh, <laughs> which is good, um, get requests from institutions or partners uh, uh, yeah, in any kind of uh, organizations. And instead of keeping the opportunity, the opportunity from them for them, themselves, sorry, they share with the entire group. And that's how, uh, that can be a starting point. And then we share <coughs> with all the members. And for example, Chiki Garcia, who is our graphic designer and art, art director, uh, she very often comes up with the uh, great concepts and, and great ways of seeing things, of shaping uh, projects. And then it's really a collaborative things. And, and the fact that we have uh, diverse uh, skills, backgrounds, networks, experiences. Um, also, we are from different generations. Uh, I guess our youngest members are um, in their 20s and the, the oldest are in their 70s. And so all that creates a, a really complementary uh, expertise and that's how that's how it works and, and yes it's uh, it's always and Hannah, as it's far as I know you're not one of the founding members so when you when they approached uh, how was it like did they did maps approach you or have you been in touch with some of the photographers was it uh, at the beginning for you was it a convincing concept um, how was it like for you when they approached you when you've been in touch first with maps? yeah well, actually, it's uh, Cédric Gerbeuil, who is one of the MAPS photographers, uh, who approached me. It was, I guess, 
three or four months before the launch and explaining me the, the concept, how they were willing to work, who were the confirmed members at the time. And, uh, and yeah, like I was saying, it's really uh, the way of working and, and, the, and the approach of multidisciplinary and trying, like experimenting. I think that's really what, what, is, what our group is, is about also, it's really, we have all these ideas and, and then how do we make them concrete and how, yeah, how do we experiment? And, and we are not always super successful, <laughs> but it's always nice uh, experiences. We don't uh, uh, when did you join MAPS and was it um, uh, make it sense from the beginning for you uh, to work with creative uh, creatives and art directors uh, together in this project? Is it, was it a question yeah, um, for Anna? So Sorry. for me, yeah. the, the way I was introduced to MAPS, um, I was introduced to MAPS because I was um, the first time I ever left the Philippines really um, was when I moved to Cambodia. Um, and, you know, at the time, it was really my first time meeting um, photographers who were not Filipino. Um, it was my first time being introduced to a much more international community. Um, and one of the people that I met while I was living in Cambodia was John Vink. And I remember when I was there, I was 23. I was really, really excited that he was, you know, almost my neighbor. Um, he was one of the photographers I'd studied, I'd looked up to. I would, you know, when I was reading about um, the history of Cambodia, I was always drawn to his images. And so I'd always looked up to him. Um, Years later, when I was starting to um, practice my own photography, um, he approached me and was telling me about this idea that was MAPS. And for me, I think it really made sense because, um, again, I think the landscape is very different um, in the Philippines. Um, you know, what you can imagine about photography, where you imagine a photograph can go, is very, very different. Um, we don't really have photo galleries here. We don't have photo festivals to go to. Um, and so what happened when John introduced me to MAPS and when I got involved and um, when I got involved and started collaborating was it really introduced me to um, sort of a new way of, of understanding how far a photograph can go, um, which I think wouldn't have been possible if I'd just been working here. Um, and if I had just been relying on, um, if on myself really. Um, and so it really provided me with a structure um, where I could learn. Um, and, you know, I, I really d rely a lot on Leticia for this as well. I still don't really know um, much about the gallery world. Um, my, my, I was already a working photographer when I went to my first festival, when I saw photographs on the walls of a museum. Um, you know, previously I'd only really imagined it on my computer screen or on my phone. Um, and so for me, it just really allowed me to think very differently. Um, and I think that that's really what MAPS was able to introduce for me. Important during the lockdown, uh, we all know that uh, the Fili Philippines are under, have been under strict lockdown for a very, very long time. How you uh, kept in touch with uh, your, your fellow uh, MAPS uh, members and uh, with Leticia? Yeah, um, it's actually been really interesting because I think, you know, when I first joined, most of the members or a lot of the members were Europe-based. Um, you know, I don't speak French. Um, and so it was very, I guess I felt much, much further. Um, with the pandemic, because more communication started happening online, um, I think, you know, we found more ways to communicate with each other. Um, and as well as when we expanded to add more members to the group, I think it really um, made that space much more comfortable. Um, where before, I think I would always be intimidated um, when I went to Europe, when I went to all these places and I never, I, I guess it was one of those things where if, if you're doing it or seeing it for the first time, um, it takes a while, there's a learning curve. Um, and so I guess one of the things that we learned during the pandemic is how to adapt. Um, and I think because of that adaptation, I think we've grown a lot as a collective. Um, I think there's much more, um, there's much more sharing and engagement, or I feel 
far more involved and I feel less far. Um, of course, it's hard to navigate different time zones all the time. Um, but I think what's, what's wonderful is always the space that people make in order for us to be able to accommodate everybody. Uh, any advice you would give photographers how to get things started? So um, maybe you know some of um, uh, our participants are now inspired but, uh, by Riverboom and by you. And, and so uh, what's the most important advice you can give for, for young folks who want to create uh, collective um, like maps or Riverboom? I, I think it's a question to, to all of you guys. I, th I think there is one thing that I would like to say is that it's very important and, and yeah to, to be aware that uh, being part of a collective and, and uh, making a collective successful is, is a lot of work and energy. So I think that's really something, uh, of course, it's super exciting and, and really yeah motivating. Uh, I think yeah, the important thing is that, uh, among others, it, it's like, yeah, everyone is really willing to work together and to be involved and to give time and energy to, to the group. That's really my advice, I would say. <laughs> Very practical one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say absolutely the same. It's a lot of lot of work, a lot of energy, but uh, it's uh, also coming back vice versa, kind of uh, action and mm -hmm. reaction. The more you put in, the more comes back. But uh, it's not uh, that easy to to continuously uh, bring all the members and uh, all the uh, energy together at the same time in a, in a, in a row. But uh, that's what uh, the collective is like. We are we are we are humans. We are not machines. And uh, there is people sometimes. Uh, with more energies, uh, some are with a uh, little less energy, and so it goes in waves. And uh, but uh, the most important thing is that uh, you're pushing forward, I think, and uh, not uh, being frustrated by when a week or months of some sometimes uh, nothing is happening. I think uh, in long terms uh, it should be an ascending situation. And um, Paolo and Gabriele, um, obviously your agency founded in a slightly unusual manner. What would you um, advise people who want to start up their own collective? Sorry, collective. I think our experience can say that you have to trust your, your ideas until the end. <laughs> because, you know, some of the ideas we had uh, were quite crazy, I would say, and probably uh, it would have been so super difficult to find a publisher for for our uh, ironic things, but so we decided to found our own publishing house, and we believed on that. And at the end, uh, it, it's paying back. I mean, we we have a lot of fun, and as uh, it was saying, uh, energy goes in waves. So sometimes we compensate each other because there are periods that my energy is really low and maybe Eduardo is really high and we compensate and, and the, the month after is the opposite. And so it's, it's, it's true that it takes a lot of energy to work together, but it's also super nice and, and fun, especially after so many year, years, we, we actually feel like a family. And, and so and then I, 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 my suggestion to young photographers is try to work together and put energy together because it's really fun and, and, and it's beautiful if you, if you succeed in doing it. I might just add one thing on, on that. Photographers tend to have inflated egos and working with others uh, teaches you uh, to you know, calm your ego down and rely on other people for things when you're in a collective with somebody that certainly knows how to do certain things better than you. So you're putting together the different energies uh, and you're not putting them in conflict. And when in the best case scenario, obviously, and, and when that happens, it's amazing because like in our case, we're, we're just five, but I know that all the others know how to do a lot of things a lot better than me. 
and you can rely on on these people and they can rely on you and that's that's very reassuring in the kind of world we are in now unfortunately we're running out of time a bit so i think we could go on, on and uh, hours and hours uh, and to listen and to dig a bit more deeper into your collective work but I just uh, want to say that we were um, we we have chosen two collectives here, but there are so many more out there. It's just to name a few: Me up from France, and uh, Docs Collective from Germany, a very young and very interesting collective, and Women uh, uh, phot Photograph, and uh, Native uh, Collective as well. Just to name a few, and follow them on Instagram, uh, attend their um, events, and uh, there's a podcast episode with Hannah Reyes Morales the first um, episode of our Visual Minds podcast. For all of you who haven't uh, heard it yet, please, uh, it's, it's a very interesting conversation. And um, yeah, and um, get inspired by them. And um, thanks for, yeah. for being with us here today. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much for you. all of our panel. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>